Hello folks, this is Ram. I'm from India. I live in Leopaya. Nice to meet you all. Hi Ram. Yeah. Hello. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. It's raining here in Riga on uh, Tuesday night. It, it kind of feels like spring. It kind of doesn't feel like spring, but I have this background in honor of you because this is actually right outside of Liepaja and you're joining mm -hmm. us from Liepaja tonight. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Thanks for joining us and telling us a little bit about your story. So why don't you start by telling us where you're from? I'm from uh, southern part of India, uh, like uh, I'm from a city called as Chennai and uh, I speak uh, the oldest language in the world and the language is called as Tamil. Mm, interesting. And, and am I assuming correctly that that's kind of the major language of that region? Uh, no. Oh, no. I mean like uh, in my region. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I thought but you were going to in India, me. no. <laughs> <laughs> and and what is Chennai like? Chennai is like a coastal city. Mm. And uh, Chennai is like lovely. I mean, like uh, amazing. I can't be able to describe through words. I mean, like it's 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 much more connected. I mean, like uh, it's it's like mother of me, mm. Chennai. So Chennai is like everything for me. Nice. And how big of a city is it? What are there certain specialties or things that the city is known for? Uh, Chennai is known for actually uh, the second largest uh, beach in the world is located in Chennai and it, it is called as Marina. Oh, wow. You're making me want to go to Chennai right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so is and, the industry in the city kind of, does it revolve around the fact that there's a beach there yes i mean like uh in india if you take india uh chennai is the chennai is called as auto hub because we have like a lo lot of uh car manufacturing industries and uh we have like a lot of industries like uh they are into like the manufacturing and other stuff. And uh, we do have like, uh, I, I'm not quite sure, but we do have like uh, the largest IT park in Asia or something. I really don't know, uh, but I'm not, I'm not quite sure regarding that. Is it in, is it in my city or, uh, the, or in Bangalore? Mm -hmm. I really don't know regarding that, but uh, we do have uh, like the largest beach. And also uh, we do have, uh, uh, the largest library uh, in, in in India, I guess. Oh wow! So, yeah, and uh, we are like full of opportunities. Very interesting. And how would you describe the people of Chennai versus maybe even other cities in India? Like, if I, I've never been there. What would you tell me about what people are like in that city? Uh, usually, I mean, like uh, in general, most people are like really calm. I mean, like uh, they are not that much outgoing. I mean, like not reserved. They are very, very friend friendly in, in the sense that uh, if, if you know, like uh, if, even if you don't know a person, he will be you not know, like offering uh, help to you. That's one amazing thing about uh, you know, like people of uh, Chennai, mm -hmm. and uh, it, and uh, to be honest with you, the people of Chennai are not from Chennai. Mm. They are like from uh, uh, they migrated from uh, uh, like uh, other cities. Uh, I live in a state called as Tamil Nadu, so they migrated uh, from uh, nearby the cities to Chennai. And I mean, like most of the people did that. I was born in Chennai, but most of the people know like migrated and it became like a part of a culture, for example, other cities and everything, you know, like uh, mingling and the diversity. And uh, you can see like uh, uh, 
a lot of churches, a lot of uh, temples, a lot of ma- mosques. So everyone mm-hmm. are like friendly and everyone are like, you know, like uh, a brother and sister. So uh, you can go ask help to anyone and they won't refuse to, uh, you know, like uh, uh, offer a hand at a, you know, like a situation or something. So that's about my city and that's about my people actually. So yeah, and something to be really proud about to be from a place that people are are so helpful and kind. Um, can you describe a little bit about growing up there and what your childhood looked like and maybe a little bit about your family? Okay, I have uh, I have actually one brother and uh, my dad actually recently passed away. So uh, my mom is a uh, homemaker. My dad was an advocate. And uh, to grow up in Chennai is like, uh, no, I'm, I'm like, a, I'm, a, I'm like a 90s kid. You know, like, uh, for example, I really love uh, growing up during that age. I mean, like I could really you know like visualize that uh, I was able to play outside a lot of, a lot of time actually, along with my friends and along with uh, the other uh, I mean, like other kids' uh, neighborhoods and other stuff. So I was not into the video games or something of, you know, like uh, keeping uh, me uh, in the home always and you no, know, like uh, looking at the TV or something. So uh, growing up in Chennai, it's a very hot city, by the way. And and still, you no, know, like uh, we managed to you know, like go outside and we managed to you know, like play and other stuff and do some stuff together and... Uh, okay. I grew up with uh, actually uh, my cousin and uh, my nephews, my nieces. I mean, like we all together, you know, like lived in a single apartment. I mean, like in an apartment, like, but uh, you no, know, like uh, neighbor neighborhood. So uh, mm-hmm. I was all, I was you not know, like uh, protected all the times because I am the, you know, like uh, the, the last kid. Ah, so <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I was kind of a special to everyone the family so uh, even I mean like for my uncle for my aunt for for uh, everyone I mean like uh, I was uh, I was always being protected my uh, uh, brother my cousin and my nieces and my nephews so uh, all were there to support me and uh, and then we do things together actually if you want to go uh, play and uh, you know, like play other uh, sport, like for example, chess. While while I was growing up, I was into chess and I was playing chess. And uh, and also with my friends, I play. I mean, like uh, I'm an Indian, so uh, the main game for me is like cricket. Mm-hmm. So uh, I played cricket with uh, my friends, my schoolmates, and. Uh, uh, it was really fun, actually, because uh, every time we will be waiting for, uh, you know, like uh, the holidays and then uh, we go out and we just play, play, play until, you know, like the sun is setting down and then, you know, like continue to play, play, play after. So it was like that, actually, for me. I was, you know, like uh, the naughtiest child, but, you know, like uh, at the same time, I was obedient. So uh, everything, you know, like... Uh, sculptured me I would say so and uh, at what point did you start thinking possibly that you might travel outside of your city um, or even travel abroad actually after completing my bachelor's in engineering I got a job as a product development engineer and I worked there, worked in a company which manufactures uh, plastic products for Danfoss and uh, Ford. And uh, that time while I was working there, I realized that with this knowledge, I can't able to you know, like move further in my career. So I thought uh, it's better you not know, like uh, go and do some uh, master studies and then you not know, like uh, get, get a, exposure because uh, I haven't been to uh, any places outside of uh, India or even any places uh, up north actually Mm -hmm. because uh, I used to travel along with my friends uh, and we just uh, toured uh, like once a year 
and uh, we just toured uh, in the southern part of, uh, of southern part of the country so it was quite an experience for me because uh, i have never traveled and i just traveled to uh, up north to get my visa initially so i just traveled you know, like alone and uh, no one was there actually i was afraid because i really don't know the language i mean like uh, i speak uh, tamil and the up north you no know, like they all speak uh, hindi and it's very difficult for me to communicate because english is the common other common language but some of them you no know, like you do they can't able to speak in uh, english so uh, it was very difficult for me to you know like uh, uh, get uh, where i wanted to be so uh, at the place i mean like uh, for for the latvian embassy or something so uh, uh, even if you take a uber it's it's very difficult you no know, like when I mean, uh, if you want to communicate to uh, the driver it's very difficult for for uh, the other person to understand so uh, communication was a major problem for me while traveling you know, like up north so uh, it was also good experience that i managed alone and i then i then uh, returned back it gave me like a lot of confidence that i can able to you know, like uh, travel alone to other uh, part of india and obviously you no know, like abroad because uh, mm-hmm. that single journey you know like uh, made me realize that okay if i can manage that one means why can't i you know like manage uh, the one which is you no know, like uh, coming uh, uh, so uh, that you know like uh, really helped me and also uh, uh, i i i'm not a, like a i'm not like a great cook or something so i have never cooked since i mean like i have never cooked uh, before i end up uh, you know like living alone in latvia mm-hmm. because my mom prepared me uh, all the uh, dishes so uh, it's like that i mean like in, in indian culture if you take you know like uh, your mom cooks a lot of your mom you know like uh, she cooks and uh, uh, but but i mean like in in two 2020s you know like it's like a internet world so you can obviously learn how to cook and other stuff so uh, i came to latvia along with other four friends and uh, i mean like i really don't know about them but you know like we ended up together traveling and then uh, we became uh, quite you know like close uh, while uh, we were staying here and uh, we managed to you know, like cook different uh, dishes and experiment like uh, different uh, dishes and other stuff so uh, uh, it was really really nice that uh, everything you no know, like uh, put in a a natural like a uh, uh, sculptured me as a man who i am right now because uh, i can cook i can uh, travel alone i can uh, uh, i'm not afraid i mean like i'm not afraid to you know like uh, talk to other people mm-hmm. mainly because i mm-hmm. was initially afraid to talk to or just you know like communicate to other people when i just landed up in latvia because uh, because of the language barrier obviously and because that uh, you know like uh, the other people will be i, I had a you no know, like uh, uh, thought that the other people might you no know, like uh, be afraid of afraid of you no know, like uh, the third country persons mm-hmm. and also i also had a fear of them initially mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like uh, so uh if if they didn't reply properly or something means uh, i will be you no know, like worried okay why why and why i want to you know like uh, be here and other stuff so i just i didn't you know like communicate like for for uh, for initially like two months or so, something because i was with my friends and they used to communicate and i really didn't uh, want to communicate because i was afraid and i realized that uh, i need to come out of that one and i need to you know like uh, explore and uh, get some exposure and uh, and do a lot of things but but yeah I, i had this hesitation and then i overcame it and uh, uh and what else i mean like uh, right now i have a lot of uh, friends in latvia as well mm-hmm. in netherlands because i stayed in netherlands i stayed in belgium as well so i had a lot of friends around the world actually i can not like communicate to any person without any fear and uh, it was a great experience actually to mm-hmm. be honest so just going back for a moment it sounds like even your initial trip to the latvian embassy to get your visa was this 
this um, burst of independence where you really yeah. had to be reliant on yourself after living in this, you know, very common, yeah. Yeah. in this family kind of protective <laughs> yeah. bubble of everybody being together and taking care of each other. And was it, was it always the plan to go abroad and study with friends from India? Did you all plan to study together or were these people that you met somehow in another way? I know actually uh, it wasn't uh, uh, a plan because uh, I just met them uh, in the airport actually. Ah. So it was not like a sudden thing and uh, yeah. And to be honest, I didn't, uh, I didn't uh, book my hostel uh, in uh, Riga Technical University. So uh, I told them that I don't have a place to stay. And they just told that they, you know, like found a place and they were like together and they told that uh, if you want to join Minch, you can uh, you know, like uh, join. And I, I thought like it, it, it's good for me to you know, like join them because I really don't know anyone. So uh, they also you know like were very, very friendly at the time. So. Yeah, very nice. So where are you going? Oh, you're going to the same place? Let's be friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And those one of the that's one of the wonderful things about schooling too. I feel like yeah. schooling, you often can come together. It's a natural place for people to come together and meet other people with similar interests. Um a, a little bit different from if you were just coming here to rent an apartment and look for a job or, or had yeah. gotten a job. So what are some of the initial things when you first got here that you experienced? You talked a little bit about feeling hesitant, um, yeah. you know, shy or, or just afraid to talk to other people, but what were some of the things that you remember that logistically you had to do when you first got here? And, and mm -hmm. maybe even emotionally, what were some of those adjustments to try to figure out how to settle into living in a place that was different from your home culture? Uh, the first thing is the climate because uh, I've never experienced a temperature of uh, negative uh, 20 degrees or something. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from a place where the temperature always reminds you know, like plus 35 to 40. And even, I mean, like, we don't have, like, a season called as winter, but mm -hmm. we do have, like, a season called as a rainy season where the temperature drops, like, uh, say, for example, 22. That's the mm -hmm. lowest uh, temperature, I mean, like, back yeah. in my city. So the first thing is really, you know, like, it was challenging to uh, accustom to this uh, temperature and uh, to, to wake up early in the morning during this temperature. It's very hard for me. It, it was very, very hard. And I tried to get up, you know, like uh, around seven o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, but I wasn't able to do that because of the temperature. And uh, and then, you know, like everyone were like that, actually. Even uh, all my friends, they couldn't be able to, you know, like get up properly during that time because of the climate change. Because suddenly we, I'm coming from uh, a quite hot place and I just landed here during the month of January. It was the coldest oh, month. Oh, goodness. I <laughs> you yeah, came in the so, coldest part. <laughs> yeah. So it was really, really tough for me, actually. And uh, and then, you know, like my body, you know, like it accustomed to the temperature. And, uh, and yeah, right now I got accustomed to this temperature. I don't know how it will be, you know, like back uh, when I'm you not know, like going back to my city. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And sometimes I think when you, when you arrive somewhere outside of the place that you grew up, you realize how much you're carrying with you from the place that you're from. Mm -hmm. Were there any things like that that you noticed that you really missed or that you felt were particularly Indian that you didn't, you saw as a contrast as something that wasn't the same here? Uh, I actually missed hanging out with my friends because every night, I mean, like, uh, I used to hang out with my school friends, mm -hmm. still school friends, because uh, we studied together for 12 years. So uh, obviously, you know, like I used to hang out with my school friends and every night we used to, you know, like uh, go to a particular place back in my city and then I used to have like a, 
kind of a fresh juice and then we used to chat over for uh, one and a half hours and then you know like go back to home late at night and uh, sleep and it was like a regular thing for us mm-hmm. and we are like 20 in people and so imagine like uh, how uh, messy that place could get so uh, uh, i missed hanging out with my friends actually and uh, and on the other hand i didn't miss my culture because i you know like hung up with uh, with with those with the persons i met in airport who are from the same background actually mm mm-hmm. so i really didn't miss much of my culture and uh, i liked hanging out with these people actually so it wasn't uh, hard for me to accustom or uh, or i can say like uh, the only part is that uh, i can't able to you know like disclose anything uh, to them i mean like if if they are like my screen of uh, friends uh whom i have to whom i used to you know like grow up and uh, do some stuff i can really you know like disclose something suddenly mm-hmm. but i i'm like quite new and they are like quite new to me so uh, it was very hard for me to you know like uh, adjust with them actually mm-hmm. uh, then you know like we gel up uh, with each other and then you know like it was really really uh, fun times i would say rather than you know like uh, studying for 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 hours and hours we just you know mm-hmm. like uh, watch some uh, movies and we enjoyed actually we enjoyed a lot actually and going going out uh, around 2 2 or 2:30 in the night uh, to have some uh, cupcakes and coffee so and and the excellent part is that we lived uh, next to origo oh yeah there there is an apartment next i mean like behind uh, mercure hotel uh huh so we ended up uh, getting a place there and then we lived there so it for i mean like my uh, amazing two years there i would say <laughs> you just had uh, you it's, had it's fun. the grocery store and all the bakeries and all everything in odega right yeah. right at your doorstep <laughs> yeah right at my I doorstep and then That's- <laughs> yeah and if i know like uh, feel hungry during the night means i'll be you know like knocking one of my friends door and uh, mm-hmm. i'll be asking if you want to go out and uh, have some uh, bite and he would say that yeah of course and it was like that if he asked me i will be going and it's it's really really uh, good good uh, i mean like it was a good experience actually. yeah well you'll have to see the new newly redesigned and reopened origo <laughs> now that it's even uh-huh. nicer <laughs> yeah <laughs> um what was i going to ask uh did your school offer any kind of assistance in um helping international students adjust actually i really don't know about it because uh, they offer they are offering but uh, as i told i found uh, some other group you know, like he op- mm-hmm. they offered me some things so i really so didn't, didn't about, worry uh, about it uh, yeah <laughs> i mean like uh, i didn't worry about yeah. it i really didn't care so mhm um when you first arrived here or or soon thereafter when you actually did start talking to people what were some of the things that you noticed about latvians and of course this is is your observation but what what seemed particularly characteristic of of latvians or latvia to you uh the first thing i really really uh, notice is that they are like reserved mhm they are like uh, reserved people they you know like uh, they fit to their own clan and uh, and and uh, and it was like quite different for me because uh, the place where i am from you know like uh, it wasn't like we fit to our own clan or something we just uh, you know like uh, uh, invite other people also to you know like mingle with them and we we enjoy actually the diversity but mm-hmm. here you know like uh, uh, maybe that's the reason you no know, like uh, why i you know like uh, was shy to you know like uh, talk to them and uh, initially so mm-hmm. uh, i just found that i mean like that their culture is like okay being reserved at first and then if 
if i you know like get to get to know them well means they really open up well and you know like they were like very very funny actually to be honest because i have like a lot of flat interns and uh, they are like really really funny and once you know like you get you know like really really close they are like a family to you and uh, mm-hmm. and they are like really helpful because uh, uh, uh one of the guy i mean like uh, he's uh, in my office and he's like really funny and he's like really helpful and uh, he's a great person actually so how did you how did you meet locals you know i think as a student sometimes it's easy to stay with other students and with other international students because you're in the same programs how did you yeah. meet locals or how did you try to meet locals uh i mean like uh i ended up uh, meeting locals by you know like uh through my friends actually they were like quite you no know, like outgoing and other stuff but mm-hmm. i wasn't that much uh, outgoing and uh, they were like going for the going to the parties and other stuff but i'm not like really really you no know, like a party guy or something so uh, through the parties i met a few uh, persons and uh, education helped me on the other hand like my university they i mean like we uh, have like a similar class and you no know, like uh, uh, everything you no know, like uh, uh or similar and 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 uh, we share the classroom together so uh, and it, if if anyone know like know something means we can know like go and ask them and uh, if other if i know something means people you know like come and ask me so it was like that actually so it was easy for me to meet people uh through the university rather than you know, like uh, going out alone and you know, like meeting uh, some people so Gotcha. So you did have international students and local students mixing in the same classes. Yeah. But I'm assuming the classes were offered in English. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Well, then I would imagine yeah, I would you have something in common and you have some some reason to to talk to each other and and meet each other. And so tell us the story of how um you went from being in school in Riga and i know you have a little bit of a <laughs> traveling story to yeah. how you ended up in leopaya yeah. okay uh it was all because of the erasmus program and it was really really helpful for a person like me i mean like uh, i would advise everyone i mean like to take part in the erasmus program because it's really really fun it can be like really fun and uh uh after it, it can be like uh after you complete like one year of studies in riga technical university and then they will be you no know, like uh, uh uh getting your grades from uh, the semesters two semesters and then they will be calculating uh, the average of uh, everything and then they have like a threshold uh, grade and then if we surpass that grade means we are selected for uh, uh english test initially and then uh, an interview with uh, the erasmus coordinator and uh, uh department head or something i really don't know i forgot it mhm and for and then, non eu people can you explain just a little bit more what the erasmus program is i think erasmus program is uh, common uh, for everyone mhm uh, it doesn't so exist not like in the a, united yeah, states yeah it doesn't like oh Okay. Yeah, so like uh, for people from the United States or people from India who have never studied in Europe, what what is the Erasmus program? Okay, uh, Erasmus program is uh uh through the Erasmus program I mean, like you can you know like uh go to another city, I mean like another country and then you can pursue your education there. Like continuation of uh, an education for a single semester or mm-hmm. two semesters. Mhm. so basically how it works is that you'll be getting the scholarship for your living and uh, your home university and then uh, you'll be you not know, like going there you'll be uh, mixing with uh, i mean like you gelling up with other erasmus students uh, at the host university mm-hmm. so you can meet a lot of uh, different people from a lot of different backgrounds and uh, you can enjoy and you can you not know, like have a uh, better knowledge and exposure i would say and uh, also you know like uh, meeting a lot of different people helps you to understand uh, how diverse the world is and we should not uh, you know like uh, 
uh, how to say, uh, we should not like think particularly that this is like high and this is like low or something. So it's 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 like how diverse the world is and uh, and you you don't know like uh, you can uh, learn anything from anyone. So the knowledge of uh, uh, learning is like it's 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 also like diverse because i can learn something from a person in belgium a person in netherlands a person in uh, uh, i mean like a person from uh, from from germany so there's like a lot of different things going on there and uh, they have like a d- different perspective about something and you have like a, d- a different perspective about something so if you have uh, you know like if you collect the the important or what you feel important or like the positive perspective from them mm-hmm. means it, it it shapes you actually because you have this knowledge from everywhere and you can like put together and you know like you can be a different man actually mm-hmm. so uh i through this program uh, went to uh, catholic university of belgium which is like one of the top top universities i'm like top 20 universities in the world so i met a lot of uh, different uh, people from different backgrounds and uh, we used we had like uh, uh, every friday we had like parties and uh, we also had like uh, uh, i mean like every saturdays or something we had like uh, a place where we can uh, exchange our language mm mm-hmm. so that was really really fun and uh, and also you know like a place where we can you know like go or go out and hang out with other people and uh, the, all these things are you not know, like uh, are arranged by the university and also uh, it was like a strict uh, how to say uh, schedule because uh, your your classes i mean like my classes started around uh, 7:30 in the morning again mm. i ended up uh, going there uh, during uh, the month of uh, february i guess mm. so it was difficult <laughs> again for me to not catch up yeah <laughs> to catch up with uh, the classes initially but yeah i managed to do that and uh, uh and the surprising part when i moved from latvia to belgium is that i found uh, all the people i mean like even uh, from the from the kids to the elderly people they use bike ah in belgium in belgium mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there were like separate lanes and they use bike when i was in india i was like biking till uh, a 10th grade or 11th grade i don't remember but then after uh, once i know like uh, started my university i had no like uh, moved on to the motorcycle mm-hmm. but here in belgium i i was really amazed and uh, amazed to see that uh, everyone know like they bike and they love biking mm-hmm. and and i also you know like ended up uh, getting a bike and you know like i also joined with them and uh, i stayed long with uh, other three belgium people and uh, they were they were also like students at the university and they were like uh, quite friendly and and, and uh, we also had uh, like a common dinner every 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 two weeks i think so uh, it was really really nice to get uh, get them know actually get to know them actually so uh, uh, and then my house owner uh, he was also like uh, invited me for the dinner and uh, i i i saw a complete different culture there because uh, the i mean like i could relate uh, the culture there to my city culture because the people you know like used to uh, used to, i mean like they are like really friendly i mean like everywhere you go they they'll be you know like uh, saying uh, hello to you and uh, uh, they'll be asking how are you at least once a day mm-hmm. even even you know like if you meet like uh, after uh, uh, 16 or after 70 they'll be asking like uh, uh, how are you doing and uh, they'll be you know like uh, greeting you and uh, every time there is like uh, okay i had uh, uh, fell down from my bike and there the people you know like uh, came and helped me and then they uh, asked me like uh, 
if you know to bike or something they were like really caring actually and uh, i found like really amazing to be there i enjoyed like completely 8 months of my time i really enjoyed and yeah, then i can hear that yeah <laughs> it yeah. sounds like it was a really wonderful experience and what city yeah. was this in belgium uh, it's called sluven oh okay i've i've heard of it it's a tiny city yeah it's yeah. it's a tiny city but it's a damn beautiful city actually mhm mhm and, and... Uh, yeah on my journey uh, i actually uh, came to latvia to do my master thesis and then after doing my master thesis after graduating through the erasmus uh, opportunity i then uh, uh, went to netherlands for pursuing my uh, uh, internship as a product development engineer in netherlands it's also you know, like it's kind of similar to belgium because they speak dutch that's just the main language but in belgium you know like uh, there are like three languages mm-hmm. one is like dutch uh, f- another one is like french and some part of belgium you know like they speak german but uh, okay this is like kind of funny when you uh, tell people that you know uh, belgians are good to netherlands people or netherlands are you know, like dutch people are good to belgium people they'll be like really really uh, uh, contrasting the opinion mm-hmm. from, from they have uh, a rivalry they were a rival i mean like in in terms of language i would say mm-hmm. uh, my boss actually uh when i when i told when i told that uh, i learned you know like dutch when i was uh, uh in belgium and i was studying in uh, belgium and he told that oh is it good i mean like uh, can you speak something and i just spoke i mean like i just greeted and uh, i just uh, told him a few words and uh, he was like uh, you have to learn the language dutch the the difference in the dialect and other stuff he, mm-hmm. he couldn't be able to understand me properly so that is funny and yeah <laughs> uh for 10 months i i uh, stayed in uh, netherlands i mean like mm-hmm. not i mean like my internship period was like uh, 10 months around 10 months and then uh, because of the covid i had to extend my uh, stay in netherlands and netherlands is completely i would say it's 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 not like different when compared to belgium because uh, they also used to bike and uh, the one thing i saw in netherlands like people are like really really tall oh they're very really tall. tall yes they are known yeah, for being really, very tall yeah <laughs> they are like really really tall and they love uh, cheese more than any person in the world they include cheese in each and every uh, uh, meal they consume actually and how did you end up back in latvia in lepaia yeah actually uh, when i was in netherlands uh, this covid struck and i had to uh, be in netherlands i didn't have uh, any uh, visa from netherlands as well because uh, i need to get uh, a visa to stay in netherlands and i mm. reported to mm. my immigration that uh, i would be staying for another uh, i don't know till the covid ends or till i can travel back to latvia or something and they told that it's fine and uh, you can now like return your uh, i just returned my uh, residence permit card to them netherlands residence permit card of course so uh during the time i uh, thought of now like uh, search for a job uh i know i knew that uh, there won't be you no know, like uh, any job opportunities for me in netherlands because uh, i had like uh, around four or five interviews and i got like selected in uh, three companies but uh, one of one of which is like uh, the company where i did my intern but uh, because of this you no know, like uh, a pay higher payment for uh, the expect that is like from the third country persons they have they have to, the company has to pay like more when compared to uh, the european citizens so uh, wherever i go they will be you no know, like a, uh how, like no you you are like really good but they but we can't able to pay this much uh, amount mm-hmm. of stuff because mm-hmm. of these things and other stuff but if you graduated from uh, netherlands it's a different story but i didn't graduate from netherlands or uh, i didn't you know like uh, graduate from belgium or something i graduated from uh, riga technical university so uh, it also uh, 
has an impact over there. So uh, uh, I can not like apply for search for jobs uh, in Latvia. I just gave only one try. And uh, I just applied to uh, design engineer here in Lepaya. And uh, through him, uh, he sent uh, my resume to uh, my boss, current boss, who is in Denmark, because uh, this company which I'm working is like a, a Danish company. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was advertised, it wasn't advertised for a mechanical engineer, but I just randomly, you know, like sent uh, my resume and uh, they had, you know, like uh, they shifted from hiring an uh, a electrical design engineer to a mechanical design engineer because uh, they want some some of the products to be, you know, like designed and uh, developed and uh, mm -hmm. they want a person who who is from this background. So uh, I'm happy that I ended up here actually th through this because uh, uh, everything, you know, like uh, came together and, you know, like uh, the company helps me, helped me a lot. Uh, to be honest, I, I just got my uh, uh, visa uh, before my uh, last day of renewal. Mm. It was like quite close. If if uh, the company you not know, like took another one week uh, for you not know, like uh, getting me a visa, means it. I I had to you know like uh, go back to uh, India because that was the situation. Yeah, yeah, and, you were that uh, close. And I was yeah. like really, really, really close. <laughs> and uh, last year has been quite stressful in in terms of especially in terms of trying to get anything yeah. bureaucratically done. Yeah. Um, that we've just all been. In, in interesting processes. Um, and what are some of the highlights of your new hometown of Liepāja now? What are some of the highlights or things you would point out to people who have never been to Liepāja? Uh, Liepāja is a quiet city actually when compared to Riga. And the people are, uh, I mean, the people are friendly here. Actually, to be honest with you, when compared to Riga, the mm -hmm. people are really friendly and uh, Lepe has like its own beauty and uh, uh, structure because uh, uh, you can't able to see a lot of, you know, like uh, a tourist places in Lepe, obviously, because it's a small city. I mean, like third largest city in Lat Latvia. Uh, but when compared to Riga, uh, it's like quieter mm -hmm. and... Uh, I think uh, I'm the only one Indian in the district where I live in. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people back in my, uh, back at my company, they are like really friendly because uh, every time I go in there, there is like a, a there, there's like a, I would say a cleaning lady. She used to you know, like say hello and she used to hug me and she used to, she's like, she reminds me of my grandma actually. Mm -hmm. Because she's like very, very nice and I like her a lot, actually. And, uh, and all the people I met, uh, uh, my colleagues and, uh, and, and uh, the manager and every, everyone, like they, they are really, really nice. And, uh, and I had a, a chance to you know, like, uh, learn Latvian language uh, through them and still I'm learning Latvian language. So the company arranged, arranged uh, a tutor for me and then... Uh, I'm just learning Latvian language. I'm going to take uh, the level one test in another two months as per my uh, teacher's uh, advice. Mm -hmm. So, and then uh, after moving here uh, to Lepaya, I met a lot of uh, nice persons. I mean, like in Latvia, because I was searching for a house in, uh, in uh, Lepaya. And uh, I just used this uh, site at uh, site SS.LV. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, through that, I also met uh, a computer engineer, uh, but he has a house in in Lepaya, but he lives in Riga. He works in Asinchar. Mm -hmm. So uh, he just asked me regarding uh, everything, like why I just moved from Netherlands to uh, Latvia and what's your thoughts about uh, you know, like moving and working in Latvia, like uh, everything and uh, in regards with the salary and comparison and uh, in, in regards with the life situation as well i mean like uh, obviously you're from united states of america and you can see the difference between uh, uh, the living conditions uh, here in latvia and uh, you would have experienced the living conditions uh, 
you know like uh, in united states of uh, america so i just moved from netherlands and netherlands is like quite you know like it's 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 already you not know, like uh, developed well developed and uh, mm-hmm. all stuff and compared to latvia but you know like i don't know but i really like this place i mean like uh, this is the place i feel like okay it's my second home i mean like after india so uh and and also you no know, like uh, i had a problem actually when i was in netherlands uh i had up with, with because of my bad diet because of my uh, everything i mean like because of my stress because of my bad diet and during the time actually my dad also passed away so mm-hmm. everything you no know, like came together and uh, i ended up with uh, this is called as ulcerative colitis it's quite you no know, like uh, it's difficult to explain but uh, i ended up with that disease and there is no like cure for that but uh, i also got treated in latvia actually but there is no cure but you no know, like i'm recovering from uh, uh, you know like uh, that disease and uh, and also you know like i am following like a strict diet and uh, i could do a lot of things actually i uh, i hang out with uh, one of other uh, lady actually she uh, okay i met her through an app called as tandem which mm-hmm. is like a language exchange uh, group mm-hmm. and uh, she helped me actually initially to uh, learn latvian language and uh, i uh, and, and we ended up uh, becoming friends and uh, i uh, hung out with her and uh, actually i got a tattoo through her friend mm. so uh, so yeah i mean like we uh, uh, we chat like uh, like like three to four days in a week so uh, if if i have something you no know, like uh, which is really didn't understand in terms of like latvian language or something i just uh, no like uh, ask her or just call her and i uh, just uh, send her some pics of uh, my homework or something i couldn't even understand what i have to do and other stuff so uh, she's like really a uh, nice person and uh, and yeah w- when i was studying here in latvia i didn't uh, visit a lot of places actually but once i you know like ended up working in uh, latvia i just uh, went to uh, place uh, along with my uh, f- colleague uh, it's it's uh, i think it's sigulda mhm uh then uh, then then uh, we also hiked uh, somewhere i don't know i really don't know the place but we will we also hiked somewhere and uh, i went to chases mhm and uh, i visited the uh, the beach over here yeah so and, you're starting uh, it sounds like uh, yeah you're i started starting to, to build a life here now yeah. that you're working here which is maybe a little bit different than the life you were living as a student yeah yeah and also you no know, like uh, the expats over here actually i met up a few americans but uh, they were you no know, like uh, went back to their own country mm-hmm. and uh, and also uh, i met anita she's mm-hmm. like also uh, uh an expat but she's like uh, from new zealand but her roots are like uh, uh, latvian so i also uh, met her uh, she's like a very nice uh, person and uh, and and uh, i also met uh, one other uh, guy uh, he's studying in uh, leipaya university and he's a latvian and uh, we just hung out like for for three times and uh, and yeah i'm connecting with a lot of people actually to be honest and uh, yeah it sounds like it if i if i yeah if i if i uh, you know like uh, think about my uh, situation which is in the past that i was like really afraid sorry i was like really afraid to you know like connect to people or you not know, like express myself to other people when compared to who i am right now i feel a lot of change i mean like uh, i can easily connect as, as i said before actually so uh, it doesn't bother me if i if i you know like I, they speak like latvian or something i just go up and i just you know like use the sign language and and then you know like uh, just talk I, actually i also uh, uh, ended up uh, uh, you know like uh, in an in an badminton club here and uh, the coach there you know like he used to uh, uh tell me that uh, 
uh, whenever there's like a free spot you can just come in and you can you know like uh, give it a go and other stuff so uh, i'm just really uh, hoping for uh, you know like uh, all the relaxation which uh, will be you know like uh, in in, yeah, in, in the all, future we're right? all waiting yeah. to be able to do things again yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well it, it will sounds, be nice actually it sounds really like you've had a very nice landing now in this new home city and mm. and like you said it it feels like a home you've been meeting yeah. a lot of people and it feels very um yeah. accepting and friendly which you know you mentioned that you're you're the only indian in your area and that could that yeah. could feel very isolating to be the only yeah, person very, very that kind of understands yeah. where you come from um so i'm so i'm also glad to hear that you have found other people to connect with and other people to to you know acclimate you to Leopaya locals who are who are kind of sharing themselves with you and um yeah that sounds really wonderful my teacher she also shares a lot of things with me in terms of the latvian culture and also uh, how the people know like uh, moved on from the war Mm-hmm. and uh, how they you know like still uh being you no know, like a, uh in a closed uh, clan or something because of the influence of uh, influence of the war and post war situations and other stuff so she helped me a lot in understanding the people latvian people better i would say mm-hmm. she helped me really understand regarding uh, how i should approach and uh, what my limitations are and i should not like push anyone and other stuff because uh, uh without her knowledge and without you no know, like uh, talking to her i couldn't have you no know, like uh, uh made some connections uh with the with the locals here because uh, because as i said uh, uh the war and other stuff influenced them and uh, they are like uh, who they are but they are like nice people once you know like you open up and uh, other stuff because i used to go to uh, market here and i used to uh, get a uh, you know like uh, a fish there there is like uh, a lady and uh, whenever i go she used to you know like uh, take it and then give it to me she she won't even ask like how much or something because she knew that uh, i'll be you know like coming during that particular day and then you no know, like visiting her and then you no know, like collecting some food from her so it was like that actually for me but initial uh, one and a half months i would say that it's, it's like uh, it felt like uh, uh, very very new for me because uh, because of the place initially it wasn't like riga or like uh, rotterdam uh, it was completely new and it was completely quiet and uh, i thought like okay is it like a good place to stay or something and once i you know like started to uh, connect to to other people and you know like uh, uh, explore myself i would say so it was really really a good place to, it turned out to be a good place to stay actually i live i'm living here since august and uh, the only thing which i found which i find you no know, like uh, uh, annoying is that uh, i need to travel like 3 and a half hours or 4 hours to uh, get back to riga Mm-hmm. to meet my mm-hmm. meet other friends so uh, that's uh, one thing and uh, the other thing is that uh, i can't able to travel yes because of and the it, covid reasons. and it's and it's particularly difficult it's interesting you've you've had some really um some wonderful connections with people here mm-hmm. in leopaya and that's pretty amazing given that between august and now it's yeah. the middle of march just like someone mentioned most yeah. of this time has been really restricted yeah. uh, so it's it will be interesting to see what your life in leopaya then becomes also as the restrictions loosen and it kind of um you know goes back maybe a little bit to the way that it was prior to mm-hmm. to that time. So I'm uh we'll have to come back and interview you again <laughs> in another year. <laughs> this kind of get a little update. <laughs> you sure? Yeah. Well, I'm glad to actually do that interview. 
Yeah, thank you so much for sharing with us. It's been really interesting talking to you. You've had some um, pretty unique experiences and I'm glad to hear that um, you're feeling pretty good about settling into Leopaya and uh, yeah, thank you. You're welcome, actually. <laughs>